let's talk about some of the big moves that China is making in the global space race. Since they emerged as a true player about 10 years ago, the Chinese space program has been moving forward at a blistering pace of innovation that is leaving other competitors in the dust, with SpaceX being about the only exception. It's fascinating to watch, if not a little bit concerning. China carries out their space program in isolation, while most of the world approaches space exploration as a cooperative effort between nations. China is just over there in the corner doing their own thing. So we never know exactly what they're up to. And we know that the information we do receive is very carefully curated by state-run media. But what we do see has been pretty spectacular. A vertical takeoff and landing test of a rocket that looks eerily similar to the early SpaceX Starship experiments, a new generation of reusable rocket boosters, a reusable space plane for commercial passenger flights around the world, even the development of a futuristic spaceport city on an island in the South China Sea. At the same time, China has a plan to quickly build out and complete their Tiangong space station by the end of this year and a detailed roadmap for interplanetary exploration that will establish a strong Chinese presence on the moon, Mars, and even Venus and beyond. So let's get into some details about how China is hatching their takeover of outer space. This is the space race. As Elon Musk has always said, reusability is the holy grail of rocketry. The only way to make spaceflight truly sustainable and affordable is to have rapidly reusable vehicles. Imagine if we just threw every airplane in the garbage after flying it just one time. That would make commercial air travel impossible. Same deal with spaceships. We can't just keep throwing the majority of the rocket into the sea and then building a whole new one every time we want to launch. It makes sense, but for whatever reason, only a couple of Western rocket manufacturers seem interested in developing the technology. SpaceX is the obvious leader in the field with their reusable Falcon booster and their upcoming Starship and Super Heavy combo. Blue Origin has been successful landing the first stage of their suborbital tourist rocket the New Shepard, and newcomer Rocket Lab is working hard towards achieving reusability. But that's about it. NASA, ULA, ESA, Arian Space, none of them are even talking about trying to land a rocket booster anytime soon. Meanwhile, in China, aerospace company Deep Blue just accomplished a successful vertical launch and landing of their Nebula M1 rocket. The small booster took off one kilometer into the air and then came back down for a controlled descent under engine power. The rocket landed successfully on the ground within half a meter of the landing pad bullseye. The video that was provided is not great quality, but we can see that the Nebula is not using aerofins to control its descent like a SpaceX booster. The engine gimbal is doing all of the flight control, and the rocket does not appear to hover before touching down like a Blue Origin New Shepard does. Although it is pretty hard to see the landing with all of the dust that's kicked up. One might even say a suspicious amount of dust. I guess we'll just have to take their word for it that the booster didn't explode seconds after the video cuts out. Or maybe this is all CGI. It's impossible to know with China, and that's kind of half the fun. Either way, this test appears to be very similar in nature to the early Starship prototypes that SpaceX was launching back in 2020, often referred to as the Starhopper. Those small-scale, low-altitude tests eventually led to the first successful full-size Starship SN15 flight that reached 10 kilometers in altitude before coming down for an explosion-free landing. Deep Blue has similar plans for the Nebula. Upcoming tests to altitudes of 10 and 100 kilometers will be conducted using a new booster on the same scale as the full-size Nebula 1 rocket, and it will use more powerful 20-ton thrust engines. The first orbital launch and recovery of the Nebula 1 is planned for before the end of 2024. And Deep Blue is far from the only Chinese company experimenting with this technology. China's Link Space plans to send a rocket into space and land it safely in late 2022. 
The company announced in early May that it had carried out a static fire test of its reusable launch vehicle T6 rocket using new methane-fueled engines. The test later this year will launch the 14-meter-tall T6 to an altitude of around 100 kilometers and touch down using landing legs and grid fins similar to the way that the first stage of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket touches down. This would put Link Space on par with Blue Origin's New Shepard, which is about the same size and also reaches 100 kilometers in altitude before coming down for a landing. Deep Blue Aerospace and Link Space are not the only commercial Chinese launch firms working towards reusability. Beijing-based iSpace is developing the Methalox Hyperbola 2 launcher, while Galactic Energy, Palace One, Space Pioneer, and others are also developing liquid propellant launchers with vertical takeoff and landing capabilities. The Chinese National Space Agency even has aspirations to convert their flagship Long March 8 booster into a reusable rocket in the near future. And if that wasn't enough, check out this suborbital space plane design from Chinese company Space Transportation. This is much more conceptual than anything we just talked about, but it is a really cool idea. This rocket glider gets strapped into a pair of boosters attached to a giant wing, which then blasts off vertically and sends the glider full of passengers into suborbital space. The booster wing comes back down to the ground for a landing, while the space plane circles the Earth towards its destination. The passengers glide back down through the atmosphere before the plane's rocket engine kicks back on and makes a vertical propulsive landing at the destination spaceport. It's wildly ambitious, but this genuinely looks like the future. If you've ever wanted some space in your pocket, our sponsor Exter is the slimmest and smartest wallet made from space grade aluminum or carbon fiber or environmentally certified premium leather. You'll literally be saving a lot of space in your pockets. This wallet is super slim and has a built-in RFID to protect you from wireless theft. But sometimes theft isn't the issue. We just happen to lose our wallet or misplace it. Luckily, they have a solar powered tracking device that lets you track the location of your wallet from your smartphone and only needs two hours in the sun for three months of charge. I've been using my extra wallet for a few weeks now and absolutely love it. The quick card access is incredibly easy to use and makes you feel like James Bond with a fancy gadget wallet. I cannot recommend this wallet enough. I'm in love with it and somehow they've significantly underpriced their wallets. I don't know how, but they're giving everyone 25% off for Father's Day. So please buy one for you and your father or son before they realize they've made a huge mistake. To get your extra wallet today, click our link in the description or go to extra.com. Don't wait, this is a crazy good deal. And now let's get back to the video. The Chinese are even putting in work to build a futuristic spaceport city on a southern island to support their aerospace industry. The Wenchang International Aerospace City will accelerate efforts to establish a commercial launch site and rocket assembly plants on the island province of Hainan in the South China Sea. This spaceport is basically everything that we imagined Elon Musk's Starbase City might one day evolve into a hub for launching, constructing, and testing new rockets, satellites, and spacecrafts. The Chinese coastal spaceport was constructed specifically for launches of large, new generation launch vehicles to allow China to undertake major space projects. Since opening in 2014, the Wenchang spaceport has already hosted 16 launches, including a Tiangong space station module and cargo missions, a lunar sample return, and the country's first trip to Mars. The Tianwen-1, it's literally a vision of what the SpaceX Starbase could be, if not for the environmental limitations of the South Texas location. Someone needs to get Elon Musk an island, seriously. Of course, there is still China's heavenly palace to talk about, the Tiangong Space Station. The country has released their roadmap for bringing the station up to full operation by the end of this year. There will be six major missions, the first of which was just a few days ago and successfully delivered the Tianzhou cargo craft to the station, carrying thousands of pounds of supplies for an upcoming crewed mission, along with propellant and scientific experiments. In June, a fresh crew of Taikonauts will arrive for a six-month duration in orbit. 
Then in July, a second module called Wen Tian, or Asking the Heavens, will join the original Tian He, followed by the third and final module called Meng Tian, or Dreaming of the Heavens, which is scheduled to launch in October. That means, in six months from now, there will be enough space up there for China to conduct a crew rotation, with both the outgoing and incoming Taikonauts occupying the space station at the same time. China also confirmed their plan to launch the Tiangong's companion space telescope into orbit in late 2023. Chinese officials even went on to say that they are developing further expansion modules for Tiangong that might eventually double the size of the station to six modules. When asked about international cooperation, Chinese officials said they will certainly carry out more in-depth exchanges and cooperation with all countries in the world committed to the peaceful use of outer space. And we know that China's ambitions for outer space don't stop with low Earth orbit. They have already made big moves towards interplanetary exploration. China already has a pretty solid presence on the moon, with their lander and rover mission on the lunar far side. That's set to expand significantly over the next few years. Their next lander, the Chang'e 6, will be a sample return mission that brings home rock samples from the South Pole region of the moon's far side. That will be followed up by the ambitious Chang'e 7 mission, which includes an orbiter, lander, rover, and a small hopping spacecraft for investigating shadowed craters for water ice. This will also land at the moon's south pole, which is thought to be the ideal location for any future moon base. Both of these missions are set to launch in or before 2025. At some point following that, China will launch Chang'e 8, which is designed for in-situ resource utilization, oxygen extraction, and 3D printing technology tests on the moon. The idea being to use these test results as a stepping stone to a potential permanent lunar base. At the same time, NASA is throwing all of their eggs and money into one basket, the Artemis 3 crew landing on the moon, which is an awesome mission. People landing on the moon is cool as hell. However, we do have to admit that China is going to accomplish a lot more research and discovery with their years-long series of small robot missions than NASA possibly could with two astronauts spending five days on the surface. If that even happens, it still feels doubtful. So there's a strong potential that the moon will belong to China in the 21st century. And then there's Mars. China's Zhurong rover is out there alongside NASA's Perseverance. Both missions launched in 2020 from Earth and have been making some pretty compelling discoveries in their first year of operation. China's rover landed in an area known as Utopia Planitia. It's the basin of a gigantic impact crater, actually the largest known crater in the solar system. NASA's Perseverance also landed in the bottom of a crater, and both rover locations are thought to have contained bodies of liquid water in the ancient past. New data received from China's Zhurong seems to suggest that liquid water flowed on Mars much more recently than we thought, and may still exist as an underground water table. A recently published study titled Zhurong Reveals Recent Aqueous Activities in Utopia Planitia, Mars, explains that characteristics identified in the surface rock would suggest that it has been recently hydrated by liquid water. Researchers suggest that there is the presence of substantial liquid water, which originates by either groundwater rising up or subsurface ice melting. This would indicate a significantly more active hydrosphere on Mars than we previously thought, which is pretty crazy. We know that water is the solvent of life, and every place on Earth where we find liquid water, we also find at least some form of life. There's no reason to believe that the same is not true for Mars. And if that wasn't enough, China is going to Venus, and even Jupiter. The chief designer of China's lunar exploration program told Chinese state media in March that Tianwen 2, 3, and 4 missions are set to follow the current Mars mission. Tianwen means questions about the heavens and comes from an ancient Chinese poem. In that same time, China revealed in a recent space white paper that it plans to launch a mission that will sample an asteroid and visit a comet. 
a Mars sample return mission, and a probe to explore the Jupiter system. Officials continued to say that China is also considering adding Venus to its targets for exploration. Venus has become a hot topic since the fall of 2020, when it was discovered that the planet's atmosphere contains a chemical called phosphine, which is associated with the process of life on Earth. Last year, NASA and the European Space Agency announced three missions to Venus that would follow up on this discovery. Honestly, this is just the surface level of what China is up to when it comes to space exploration and rocket development. Each one of these subjects we covered today could be their own full-length video. So if that's something you'd like to see, let us know in the comments below and make sure you're subscribed for more content. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.